and welcome to another episode of Jason's Game Room, the only podcast on YouTube that talks about everything gaming, no matter what it is, from video games to dice games to board games to CCGs. If it has anything to do with gaming, it is on this show. So to get your gaming fix, you're going to want to keep tuning in or subscribing to catch every new episode that I put out. Now, several episodes back, I did a feature on the decade of the 1990s, and I detailed for you all the big events in gaming across uh, all genres. And on today's show, I want to talk about the early 2000s and several of the main things that happened in the first bunch of years in regards to gaming as a whole, and I'm going across video games, CCGs, a few things for this, but let me start off with one of the biggest things that happened in the year 2000 itself to start the decade, and that was the introduction of the PlayStation 2 from Sony. Now, the PlayStation 2 was one of the best consoles ever made, and even after the PS3 came out in 2006, they kept making the PlayStation 2 and producing it for many many years afterwards because it was that awesome and it still holds its own today with a lot of the titles that came out for it and one of the main things that set the PlayStation 2 apart from other consoles was its not so much just the graphics but the fact that the online play was now a thing and I'll use an example from one of my favorite games on that console Star Wars Battlefront 2 the original one not that newer one that's come out recently for PS4 Star Wars Battlefront 2 was an amazing game and with the introduction of uh, a type of online game where you had command posts and you could respawn after dying and there were so many things you could do in that game and especially if you had a stable internet connection and you're able to connect with a few friends and plan out strategies and have help in the game it was amazing and it also introduced ground-based combat and space-based combat depending on the map you were on so you could do anything from be a stormtrooper or a rebel soldier and shoot ground targets and get in ground vehicles to capture CPs or you could go up in space you could jump in a turret or a turbo laser on a star destroyer you could fly around in either an X-ring, a Y-wing TIE fighter, TIE bomber, it was amazing it was one of the best times I've had in a video game uh, before the PS3 came along and online play got even bigger but the PS2 had so many groundbreaking games that I also owned and enjoyed and some of those included Grand Theft Auto San Andreas that was a huge game uh, at that time it had the biggest Grand Theft Auto map made up to that point so you could not only do missions but you could spend a lot of time exploring that map because that was way bigger than anything that had come before it and it was fun just to wander around even on foot or on a bicycle and just explore now granted you had to progress in the game to access certain parts of the map but still it was fun Gran Turismo 3 Ace Back, one of my favorite Gran Turismo games of all time so many different cars and tracks introduced in that game it was one of the best uh, Gran Turismo games in my opinion until Gran Turismo 5 came along Grand Theft Auto Vice City, hell of a lot of fun. And one of the other games that I really enjoyed on that system was some of the uh, with the Madden NFL games when I was still bigger into playing those before they got a little too ridiculously complicated. They were still quite fun to play at that time, and I spent many an hour playing football with my favorite team and doing trades and customizing my roster. So it was good for that. Uh, unfortunately... When the PS3 did come out, the PS2 was not as prevalent as it used to be. As I said, it continued being made, but the PS3 was way better at that point. But I still do miss the PS2 because it was simpler times back then. Um, one of the other big things that happened in the early 2000s, and if you remember, well, if you're my age or even if you're a bit younger, there was uh, the onset of... The Pokemon craze at the end of the 1990s. And no, I'm not going back into that decade because I've already done that on a previous show. But 1998-1999 brought us Pokemon. It was the cartoon. It took everybody on this side of the world by storm. 
Uh, I was 18, 19 at the time, and I enjoyed it because I thought it was an interesting anime. And I wasn't huge on anime. I only usually watch just Dragon Ball Z. But Pokemon was interesting in the way it was set up, and the, and the characters were deep. Uh, which leads us into the early 2000s and the onset of the Pokemon trading card game. Now, as a hardcore CCG player, you would think I would have jumped into that. But I didn't. I actually just paid attention from the sidelines and I knew people that played it here and there but I never got into it mainly because as I've mentioned on previous shows I was already into several CCGs and the Pokemon TCG was geared towards a younger audience whereas when Magic the Gathering Star Trek card game, Star Wars card game, Wyvern, and they all, uh, Spellfire, when they all came out, they were targeted more towards the early teens audience that could understand the mechanics of the game and play it and actually be able to afford buying a few packs of cards here and there. The Pokemon TCG was geared towards the younger crowd. So you saw a lot of primary school kids playing it at that time. Whether they'd get packages of cards for Christmas or birthdays or whatever, or their parents were feeling horribly generous... That was the age group you'd see. So maybe 9, 10, 11, 12 years old through primary school, 13, and then you maybe see some early high school kids playing it, but there was still a lot of Magic the Gathering being played at that time. And in the early 2000s, I was still in the heyday of playing the Star Trek customizable card game and finishing up at certain tournaments and still getting into some pretty awesome house rule games. I was interested in the Pokemon TCG, but again, it would have cost me a lot of money to, to get into another CCG, and I didn't see it necessary. I partially regret that decision because of the amount of tournaments that have been hosted and how easy it is to play. I did think about getting into it many years after that, but again, I didn't. Uh, I find it to be an interesting concept, mainly because if you know anything about the cartoon it helps you in the game, much like if you're playing the Star Trek card game. If you know a lot about the Star Trek universe, that certainly aids you. But it was a big thing uh, right through the 2000s into the early 2010s. Uh, as far as I know, there's still a lot of people playing it. They still produce expansions for it. So it it's managed to keep going almost like Magic, mainly because of the popularity of Pokemon. And if anyone's been paying attention, there's been a resurgence of Pokemon-themed uh, merchandise and things like that as of late. I think there's been a new cartoon. You've seen McDonald's take an interest with their Happy Meals. Not that I eat fast food because I don't, but Pokemon was one of those pop culture things that not only turned into a cult following, but it turned huge because it had appeal, it was family friendly, and the card game reflected that anybody could play it. Parents didn't have to worry at all about it, and it became the new cardboard crack for a period of time, and if anyone's not familiar with that term, because of the huge popularity of Magic the Gathering in the early 90s, as well as the CCG craze that happened in the mid-90s, most CCGs and mainly Magic the Gathering were referred to as cardboard crack, because you couldn't get enough of those cards to keep playing and keep building decks. Same with the Pokemon TCG. Um... As far as other big things in the 2000s go, that would have to be the PS3. I'm not going to get into that because I've covered the PS3 and some of its games on a previous show, but everybody knows how big that was. And it was the PS3 that was responsible uh, for me continuing my Grand Theft Auto experience as well as becoming a hardcore online player with the games Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. I played a few hours at least every night with a certain crew of people and it was a great time I actually made a lot of friends that I'm still friends with some of them today due to those games so who all those people and groups out there are saying video games are bad and they're violent no you can actually make a lot of friends from all over the world when you're playing so there's that <clears throat> there are also some other CCGs that came and went over the uh, uh, the, the 2000s and yeah, I guess you could say early 2010s, but card games such as uh, Chaotic came and went. I don't understand why it went out of fashion so soon. I read up on it, and I thought about getting into that CCG, but I didn't. Again, I was already into 
too many CCGs, and by the time Chaotic came out, I was kind of entering a semi-retirement for CCGs. So, <clears throat> on a whole, the 2000s was a very good time for gaming, because you had a lot of things coming out, new consoles and whatnot. Uh, I'm not going to mention some of the Nintendo stuff, because that gets too extensive, and I never owned a GameCube. I would have liked to, because... I played on a friend's GameCube certain Nintendo games that were really fun, so I kind of wish I might have had one, but at the same time, I had my PS2, so I was happy as a clam. That's about all I can say on today's show about the 2000s. I know I could go into more detail if I find a few more things to talk about, but at the same time, I don't want to ramble on about some minor occurrences. And actually, you know what? I did miss one thing that... The 2000s, right near the end, towards 2010, there was a bit of resurgence in board games. You saw a lot more people playing board games, and there were some great board games that we were either re-released and redesigned for their re-release or just updated, and there were some new board games that came out. Some of them I still don't understand, but classic games like Risk, Stratego, and uh, Battleship were remodeled a bit the game pieces the field the boards whatnot maybe get given subtle updates to make them more appealing but I'm it was nice to see board games coming back with a force because I've always been a fan of board games and I, I own a few board games and I like to play board games especially in the winter when there's less to do so there's that too anyways uh, I don't have the highs the lows or the downright dirty today because that would mean getting really really deep into every little detail of the 2000s and that could take more time than you probably want to hear me go on about so that's all for today's show thanks for tuning in don't forget to like subscribe share tell all your friends and of course the most important thing is to game on <laughs>